to the Perrick Project. This past weekend, a friend reminded me of when I ran a virtual challah bake the day before I gave birth. And he asked me why. Basically, he was asking me, what's your why for doing things when you don't have to? Interestingly enough, the first Mishnah in the second Perrick is going to give us a why. So Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi begins by asking, what is the proper path that a person should choose for himself? So the first thing that we have to understand is that we have free will. Everything is based upon this, that we have the ability to choose and to chart the course of our life. That is the foundation. So what does he answer? So one could think he's going to say, keep Torah mitzvahs, but that's not what he says. He says, whatever is a credit to himself and earns him the esteem of fellow man. Mm, very interesting. So there's a couple of things that we can understand from this. Firstly, he says, whatever is a credit to himself or herself, what he's saying here is that we, when we're charting the course of our life, not only do we have to worry about doing the right thing, but we also have to understand our self and our personality. And as well, we have to understand others' personalities as well and respect the others' personalities as long as it is consistent with Jewish law and authentic tradition. And how is it that we earn the esteem of fellow man? How do we earn other people's esteem? One of the ways is by always following the golden medium, not to be too extreme. For example, someone who is truly generous, they take into account both the benefactor, both the circumstance of the pe person that is giving and also the beneficiary, the person that is receiving so that it is good for both of them. And that is the one of the ways that we earn the esteem of others because they, people re respect people who follow the golden medium, medium way. And of course, this also reminds us of the rule and the the law in the Torah of the is that we how we earn the esteem of others is whatever we would do for ourselves we do for others now once we have understood these foundations that number one we have free will and number two we have to respect and use our personality in our life He's going to teach us something else. And he tells us, be as scrupulous, be as careful in performing a minor mitzvah as in a major one. For you do not know the reward given for the respective mitzvahs. What he's telling us here is that the Torah doesn't tell us which mitzvahs are major and which mitzvahs are minor. It doesn't tell us the reward for this mitzvah versus the reward for that mitzvah. So we don't know which ones are more important than others. So he's telling us we have to treat them all with equal zeal. This a, a, a parable that's given to help us understand is imagine there's a farmer. And he has lots of workers and he tells them, I have many different plants and trees in my field and some of them I'm going to reward you more for taking care of. But he doesn't tell them which one and he does. He specifically doesn't tell them because he wants them to take care of all of them. And he's worried that if I if he tells them, you know, the strawberries plant, I'm going to reward you more for then people will look at his workers will look after the re strawberry plant to the detriment of the other plants. So Hashem wants us to keep all the mitzvahs because each one has its reason. Each one has has its effect on us. Either it teaches us um, um, values. For example, Passover, the, the lessons of Passover is to remind us that God is intimately involved in our life. That's a, a, a conversation for another time, but that's one of the values that, to that Passover teaches us. And each mitzvah affects our soul. So God wants us to, to respect and keep all the mitzvahs so that we get the full benefit of all of them. But how do we do this? So he's going to give us a motivational tip 
next. He says, calculate the cost of a mitzvah against its reward and the reward of a sin against its cost. He's not telling us that you have to live your life and think about the reward you're going to get for X, Y, Z. He's telling you a motivational tip. He says, when you want to do a mitzvah and you think, nah, it's going to cost me X, Y, Z, calculate the discomfort or whatever you're going to lose against the eternal effect of that of that mitzvah and we're going to talk about that more shortly and the same with a sin when when you're tempted to do something that's wrong calculate in your mind the the temporary pleasure you'll get against the long-lasting impact of that action that you're going to do and that is a way to to motivate ourselves to do the right to do the right thing now he's going to give us three things that he tells us consider these three things and you will not come into the grip of sin most sins most failings most things that we mess up are are a result of unclear perspective so he's going to give us three things that is going to help our perspective stay grounded and help us achieve what we need to achieve in this world he's telling us number one know what is above you obviously that's besides for knowing that there is a god but knowing the truth that the way that we behave is the way that God treats us, which is an incredible thing because it's telling us that our actions have a real impact. It's not that our actions are are meaningless, but our actions have an impact on the way what happens down here. And he's telling us, number two, a watchful eye and an attentive ear. What he's telling us here is so powerful. There is this massive world with billions of people, but God is listening and watching. That's amazing. That is telling us that God cares about us enough to watch and listen. And that is going to help us keep our perspective. And number three, he tells us, and all your deeds are recorded in a book. What is this book that he's talking about? This book, it's our soul. And every single thing that we do in this world impacts our soul. And that, it lives on for eternity. Not just on our soul, but it impacts our future generation and it impacts the world. I want to share with you a personal story that I think illustrates this so strongly. I remember a few months after my father passed away, we were sitting and we were discussing my father and we were discussing his values. And some of the values I didn't remember him actually lecturing to me about. But because he lived it, it passed on to me. And I remember many years after he passed away, someone asked me, how comes you're in education? And I had to stop and think, how comes I'm, I'm in education? And I realized it was because... I I recognize that my father was so passionate about education and Jewish education and passing those values on that it was something that grew up with and my father has never met my children yet the value that he had passed on to me and in turn I'm hopefully passing that on to my children even though those two generations never met the same thing if we think about it we stop and we think Our actions, that we're not just a nobody and a nothing. Our actions are so impactful that they live on and they have everlasting eternity. And I think when we have that perspective, which is a perspective that he's telling us that we matter and our actions matter and our actions matter for eternity, that gives us a why as to why we should take care of all the mitzvot and why we shouldn't chart a course for for ourselves that is pleasant for us and for everyone around us and for our everlasting generations. Thank you for listening.